The Mystery of Time When we think of matter, we should think of the thought waves which created it. Likewise, we must think of time as an accumulation of thought waves. Thought waves accumulate into cycles upon countless cycles in the forming of bodies. As thought waves add density and other mass dimensions to the bodies they create, they also add time by lengthening the time intervals needed to repeat that body. Thought waves store up time as they store up mass. Bodies of matter are wound up thought form, I mean thought waves. The time consumed to polarize a thought wave cycle is so incredibly fast that its reproductive frequencies reach out through the universe at the rate of about 2,000 miles in one hundredth of a second. When they wind up into masses of waves to create bodies, they slow down that, their repetitive frequencies, and thus lengthen their cycle of growth and decay in proportion to the mass of thought waves which have been wound up into a formed body. Thought waves which create a body of sound must unwind their accumulations. This also takes time. The sound of a piston, no, a pistol shot is a, the sound of a pistol shot is a body of accumulated thought waves. These must unwind and rewind before they can reproduce a sound. Body, before they can repro reproduce a sound body. For this reason, the sound can reproduce itself only 1,100 feet away from its source in one second, while the thought wave of its source can circle the earth seven times in one second. The growth, decay, life, death cycle of a tree well exemplifies this principle. 50 years of time may be consumed during one period of accumulating thought wave patterns by unfolding from its seed and voiding them by refolding the record of those patterns back into their seed. Life-death cycles of insect bodies vary from minutes to months. Animal life-death cycles reach into the centuries, while thought wave accumulations of solar and nebular systems reach into the hundreds of billions of years for one vibration frequency, which is one life-death cycle. Periods of gestation likewise lengthen in duration in proportion to the accumulation of the recording of thought wave patterns upon other thought wave patterns which produce, a com which produce complex bodies. All other cycles within cycles likewise vary in similar proportions. Cycles such as respiration, pulse, sleep, digestion, and other frequencies of repetition. The fact of importance to know in relation to vibration frequencies is that no matter how complex the formed body may be, and no matter how great its duration in time, the process of growth of every cycle is the same without the slightest variation. Every growing thing must pass through nine stages in this three-dimensional universe of timed motion from the zero of its beginning to its zero ending. Every cycle is a, is a complete octave wave, and every octave wave is a series of eight tones, the amplitude tone being two, united as one, and an inert gas, the total being nine. Atomic structure would be difficult to comprehend in principle without comprehension of the above-mentioned facts. One must be able to vision a sun in the heavens whose duration is billions of years, and the sun which centers the tonal wave of a harp string of a hundredth of a second duration as being one in principle. The difference lies in the amount of time which must be expended in unwinding that mass of thought wave patterns into its thought wave units. Likewise, one must be able to vision the interchange between the sun of a solar system and its black hole counterpart on the other side of its vacuous mate as the same simple effect of the one, the same one cause. 
much confusion will disappear when knowledge of all cause and effect is thus simplified. Confusion regarding the many seemingly different particles of matter will disappear when one knows that each seemingly different particle is but a different stage in the growth of an elemental tone, and that each element is a stage in the growth of an octave wave cycle. Just as a man is the same flesh, blood, and bone in each of his stages of growth, so are all particles the same ultramicroscopic unit vortices of motion which are changing their pressure conditions during their whole life cycle journeys of simulated different substances. Confusion will likewise disappear for those who search for the life principle in matter when they know that what they assume to be life is but motion, multiplying its pressures to simulate the ideal of life and then dividing them to simulate the ideal of death. Octave Wave Cycles In order to comprehend the great simplicity which underlies the seemingly complex series of non-octaves, nine octaves, which constitute the periodic table of the elements, together with the simplicity which underlies atomic structure, it would be well to paint a word picture of nature's basic desire and her simple manner of attaining her desire. Let us, therefore, vision a man who is lying down to rest. He is in thorough equilibrium with his environment, for every part of his body occupies the same pressure relation with the Earth's center of gravity. In this balanced position, he is without the strains and tensions of electric division of his equilibrium. This position of unchanging pressures is in a place of 90 degrees from the radial direction of changing pressures, which reach outward from the center of gravity into space. The moment this man desires to demonstrate action for the fulfillment of his desires, he must rise from his plane of rest until he acquires that radial angle of 90 degrees to it. Even though he can find balance when thus standing erect, he must be awake and his senses alert in order to maintain balance. Otherwise, he would fall to the zero level from which he rose. The reason for this is because he has divided his balance into two equal balances which are controlled by the one centered in him. Eventually, he can no longer electrically control his own balance against the resistance of the two opposing conditions he has set up by extending gravity into the forever changing pressure conditions which exist in radial directions. The polarized condition which he created by his desire for action now expresses its desire for the one balance condition of rest and returns his body to the zero of equal pressures from which it rose. The above is a true symbolic word picture of every action reaction of ever happening to every body in the universe. It is also a true picture of growth decay and life death sequences. sequences. I shall now relate the above universal principle to the octave waves of the elements of matter and to the gyroscopic principle which controls the octave periodicity of the elements of matter. I shall also describe how the gyroscopic principle cooperates with the north-south magnetic poles, which control the extension of polarizing thought wave bodies from their fulcrums to their wave amplitudes, and east-west poles, which control the withdrawals of depolarizing thought wave bodies into their fulcrums from their amplitudes. Introducing the Gyroscope into the Octave Wave The relation and purpose of the gyroscope to the wave structure of the nine-octave periodic table of the elements is a very big subject for a brief treaty. For this reason, I can but touch upon it lightly, but with sufficient clarity to give full comprehension of nature's principles, principle and process. 
As all of the 121 elements, isotopes, and inner gases, no, and inert gases, which are produced by the electric wave machine in nature's workshop, acquire their seemingly different properties because of the gyroscopic wheels which spin them into their various condition, it is necessary to know how nature causes the same kind of units of motion to appear to be so many different substances. The present concept of atomic structure has no resemblance whatsoever to nature's processes, for there is no place within wave mechanics for it to fit into. This universe consists solely of waves of motion. Any theory which cannot find a fitting place within the wave has no other place for it in nature. The present-day concept of atomic structure is based upon concentric shells one within the other, which become the basis for revolving electrons placed according to formula upon those shell strata. Centering these geocentrically and geometrically placed electrons are nuclear groups of separately and oppositely charged protons and photons. By adding one electron to an outer shell, an element next in number is produced. Conversely, it is believed that if one electron could be knocked out of an element, such as mercury, the next succeeding element, gold, could be produced. Insofar as nature is concerned, one might as well say that if one of the children of a French family dies, it would change the family's nationality to Italian. Transmutation will be impossible until science realizes that atomic stru structure is gyroscopically controlled. Science has a separate theory for systems of atomic structure, which it does not apply to stellar systems. This is strange reasoning for science, for it conceded that large mass is but a multiple of small mass. A planet, a sun, or a nebula is but an accumulation of atoms. A thimbleful of matter from a sun or planet is but a thimbleful of atoms. The structure of one atom does not vary in a thimbleful, so why does it vary in thimblefuls of atoms sufficient to make a star? At what particular point in mass accumulation of atoms should the theory of atomic structure change to another theory for multiple atomic structures? It seems, it seems as though the early savants failed to, to think things through. In the present concentric shell theory, had any, if the present concentric shell theory had any validity whatsoever, our telescopes would reveal these unnatural nuclei of white and black negative and positive suns huddling together in the center of shell-like concentric layers of planets following orbits which are impossible in this universe of matter, which is created by pairs of spiral vortices, which alone form the basis of atomic, solar, or stellar construction. You never see such monstrosities in the heavens. What you do see are doubly charged suns, planets, and moons, which form solar systems. You also see groups of many solar systems, which we call spiral nebula. Every sun, planet, or moon in the heavens has a north and south pole, which divides the mass into northern and southern hemispheres. One hemisphere is not a negatively charged mass, which floats by itself, nor is the other hemisphere a positively charged mass. Each solar system has but one doubly charged sun, not a number of proton suns opposing neutron or photon suns in groups. All suns and planets in the heaven in the heavens are throwing off rings at their equators, which become planets or moons. Every mass begins as a ring and ends that way. Knowledge of the wave and of the spiral units which form the basis of the construction of matter would prohibit such unnatural theories as the present one. The secret of the constitution of matter lies in the wave. That secret is as yet unknown to science. As the wave becomes known, such unnatural theories will be discarded. 
The nucleus is the hub of the gyroscope wheel. And I think I will start that with my next video.